Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Admiral Richardson, uh, the Navy's most recent force structure assessment, FSA, explains, as I understand it, that 459 ships are needed to achieve the Navy's missions and reasonable expectations of success without incurring significant losses. Those are the words came out of the report. However, the final 2016 FSA concluded that 355 ships is an acceptable minimum force. Could you describe the importance here in, in a public setting as much as you can of meeting the minimum force levels in each of the major ship classes as outlined in the FSA? How important is this, not just to the Navy, but to our strategy and our ability to project force around the world if needed? Senator, thank you for the question. <clears throat> and uh, we did have a force structure assessment that uh, validated the need for 355 ships. Uh, and those, you know, run the gamut of uh, every ship class that we have in the Navy, from uh, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers to our SSBNs, providing strategic deterrence, uh, to our large surface combatants, uh, attack submarines, small surface combatants, and uh, amphibious ships. Uh, it's the combination of that force and you know, with respect to the aircraft carriers, the air wings that they carry, uh, it, it is a matter of both the capacity of the uh, force. Because all these ships are important, aren't they? Different they're they're all important. Because yeah, exactly. they have a role in the Navy's, uh, in the Army. They do, yes, sir. They come together staff. as a team. Yes, sir. Um, Secretary Stackley, in your written testimony today, you mentioned the importance of ensuring continued production of the LCS shipyards while the Navy refines its acquisition strategy for the future frigate. Is it accurate to say that uncertainty or even a break in current production could add a significant cost and time delay to the delivery of the Navy's future frigate? Uh, yes, leaving sir. The Aside the cost and time risk in the small surface combatant class of ships, has the Navy considered what is optimal to get the best ship at the best price for the taxpayer and, of course, the warfighter? Yes, sir. Let me first answer the question regarding the uh, risks associated with any break in production. Uh, true of the uh, uh, LCS program, true of any shipbuilding program, a break in production would be devastating. And it's not simply the uh, impact on things like learning curve, it's uh -huh. the impact to the vendor base and it's the potential loss of the skilled labor that we rely upon to build these extraordinarily complex warships. So any break in production, uh, we, we would consider to be unacceptable for a major uh, shipbuilding program. With regards to the uh, strategy going forward for the LCS, uh, right now we are procuring literally one year at a time, and we're gonna take the three ships, the one added by Congress in 17, combine it with the 2018 uh, ship that we have requested in order to go out with a single procurement of those two years to provide as much stability across the current LCS builders as we can while we continue to uh, refine the requirements and press forward with the design of the frigate because we want to keep the LCS and the frigate heel to toe as best as possible so that we have a healthy industrial base to compete for that future frigate program. How important is it uh, to keep that industrial base going because you just can't snap your fingers and build ships. You have, you have workers, you have everything, suppliers. You've got to have skilled people, have you not? Yes, sir. It's, it's absolutely critical. Our, our, our Navy is the, uh, is the only true customer for uh, procurement of these complex warships in, in this country. And so we can't afford to lose uh, the, the health that we have today in the industrial base. We have past examples where we've had a gap and the impact of trying to restore from that gap is pretty devastating. Uh, Admiral Richardson, back to you. As a submariner and as someone who has studied naval strategy in your career, you probably understand better than most how our peer com uh, competitors, China, for example, uh, in particular, look at our vulnerabilities. Everybody does, you know, and making their plans. Can you describe what the Navy is doing as much as you can in this setting? to improve its defensive and offensive capabilities to ensure that our adversaries understand that they cannot beat us in a fight. That's very, I think, important. 
Sir, thank you. Uh, first, uh, you mentioned I'm a submariner, and in one area that we do enjoy an, an advantage right now is in undersea warfare, and we're working very hard to maintain that advantage. It's just as you said, though, mm -hmm. our adversaries are studying mm -hmm. uh, us closely and are crafting their force to, uh, to address, you know, those advantages. Uh, then, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we, we need to grow the Navy. Uh, you, you've mentioned the importance of shipbuilding, and, and ships matter. And then we need to advance in capability. And so we need to equip those ships with uh, better technology to make each and every one of them more lethal. And finally, I am moving hard to network that fleet together so that it can operate as a single team across a broader uh, expanse. And so it's the combination of uh, capacity, capability at the platform level, and then the combined effect of a network fleet that will uh, allow us to maintain our edge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.